Okay, so Apple's event just wrapped up. It was pretty full of new announcements and new refreshing things, but you need to remember, AirPower is dead. There's no new AirPods. Don't ask about that. It's been dead. I told you, stop trying to prove me wrong and say, well, at this one, there will be AirPods. No. It's dead, it's gone, it's not coming out. But there's still a lot of exciting things and expensive things we have to talk about. So here's the three major things you need to know about today's Apple event. So for starters, there's a new MacBook Air. Yes, they've officially updated. And the weird thing is that it's really not that much different from the base model MacBook Pro, the one without a touch bar or a fingerprint reader. Now, the MacBook Air has a fingerprint reader with no touch bar, which hopefully can get the price a bit lower. Not crazy low, not anywhere near as low as we were hoping. $1,200, you know, we, we, we thought a thousand would have been steep. $1,200, but you are getting eighth generation CPUs with dual core i5, which I know all of you PC Master Race people out there are cringing at how expensive these CPU powered laptops are, but Mac OS is going to take best advantage of what's available to it. MacBook Air has two Thunderbolt 3 ports instead of one, and it ships with a Retina display. So as tiny of a price decrease as this is compared to a 12 inch MacBook or a MacBook Pro, it is a tiny bit cheaper than before. But I admit, I think this is priced a little bit too high. I think that it's way too close to the MacBook Pros, and they probably would have been better off with just updating the CPUs in the baseline MacBook Pros instead of just keep selling those like they are instead of making a whole new refresh to the MacBook Air which the old version with aluminum bezels they still sell for a thousand dollars on the site so a lot of that confuses me it does come in the new gold color which is nice so for the people out there that don't need the utmost powerful laptop ever but want Mac OS they want a good display they want Thunderbolt 3 they want to have a reasonable amount of power but nothing too crazy I could see why the new MacBook Air could have a new market, but again, would have been a lot better if it was a few hundred dollars cheaper. I think this kind of distorts the MacBook lineup even more because now everything is so priced too close together and it would have been so much better if they diversified the lineup a little bit with more cheaper entry points. But hey, if you don't like the touch bar, but you want to touch ID, you have that option now. You have a retina display. They've redesigned the keyboard to be more structurally sound and apparently it's much better than before. We'll see if this keyboard ends up causing problems problems. The speakers are better. So overall, fairly standard upgrade, nothing too major when it comes to the MacBook Air. That's probably why they talked about it first. Then the next more interesting refresh, I think, is the new Mac Mini, which comes in one color, space gray. That is it. Actually surprised me how many ports this Mac Mini ships with. Four Thunderbolt 3 ports, even an HDMI 2.0 port, which kind of surprised me. Two traditional 3.0 USB ports, a headphone jack, and an optional 10 gigabit Ethernet port on the back. Now, this starts with 128 gigs of SSD, 8 gigs of RAM, but it can be configured to up to 64 gigabytes of RAM, 2 terabytes of SSD. You can really spec these things out, but what they showcased in the keynote is that you can tether them together and make servers, and the idea here is to make an entry-level Mac that doesn't have any fluff, doesn't have a retina display, doesn't have built-in speakers. It's just supposed to be an entry point to Mac OS, and that's how they were able to get the Mac Mini to start at $800. It is a quad-core i3 CPU. It is 8th generation, so it should be fine with Mac OS. If this thing was running Windows, it probably would not go very well at all. But the idea is a lot of people just need Mac OS as a desktop. They don't need super fast CPUs. They don't need the best hardware ever. They just want to be able to use the latest version of Mac OS, have that nice array of Thunderbolt 3 ports so that they can support multiple monitors. But I want a lot of you guys to remember, not everyone out there is doing gaming stuff. Not everyone out there needs high intensive CPUs for the most advanced editing possible. Some people just want a Mac. And for a lot of people, I think the Mac Mini is going to be very, very helpful. On top of that, you know, it's portable, so it's not hard to pack around, throw in a backpack for a trip, and you don't have to buy a whole MacBook to have a mobile editing station now. So we ordered one. It's on the way. We ordered the pretty much base storage option, except we got the quad core i7 model and that we're going to use for kind of mobile live streaming around the office so that we can have more professional grade live streams done wherever we need to around the studio instead of just using our phones. Both of these products, by the way, should be arriving on November 7th you can buy them today. And then the main star of the show, the thing I was most looking forward to, what I'm most excited for, the new finally refreshed iPad Pros, which have Face ID, one size bezel all the way around. Luckily, same size bezel, 
install on both size options now, which are 11 inch and 12.9 inch. No more 10 and a half. That got the same footprint, but with a larger display. And then the 12.9 inch iPad got a smaller footprint with the same size display, which I think was a good move given 12.9 inch iPad Pro was just way too big. I had one for a while, but man, that was a large form factor. This one's still pretty large, but I'm glad they were able to shrink it down. They've made the switch finally to USB-C. So for people who wanted more accessory support with all of the accessories you got for your MacBook, this should work with those just fine for 5K video output and tons of other USB-C accessories that have grown across the market since the release of the MacBook Pros. But if you are upset about not being able to use your old Apple Pencil or your old Lightning chargers, I can understand the frustration. You can't charge the iPad with Lightning anymore. If you bought an Apple Pencil recently, it won't connect to the new iPad Pro because you need a Lightning port. But now the good news with USB-C is that this allows much more power and data output so you can even charge your iPhone if you have a USB-C to Lightning cable. They're shipping the iPad Pros with an 18 watt USB-C charge brick, which I imagine if you get the iPad Pro, you could probably use that charge brick for charging other iPhones. Again, if you have that USB-C to Lightning cable and the cable they include with all the iPad Pros is USB-C to C. So you get a fairly good amount of charging equipment. And of course, these are liquid retina displays with 120 hertz refresh rates, which look absolutely stunning. And now with even less bezels getting in the way, this is going to be probably one of the best displays that you can actually touch and interact with. The speakers are even better than before. The device is thinner. You'll notice no headphone jack. It finally happened to the iPad because it seems like if you want face ID on something, you can't also have the headphone jack. Those, those things don't communicate with each other. Luckily, from what it seems, face ID works in both portrait and landscape. They showcase that during the keynote and on their website, they want people to know face ID works in both orientations, which is really important. And supposedly any orientation, like you can use it upside down because now that there's no home button, there's not really a wrong way to hold it. You can just hold it however you want. I guess the buttons might be placed in a weird way, but yeah, there was that weird switch on the side of the iPad that a lot of people were theorizing, like what could this extra button be? Is that a Siri button? What is that? It's actually the magnetic docking mechanism for the new Apple Pencil. So no more charging with the lightning port anymore and sticking it out of the iPad in a real weird way. Now you can just magnetically attach the pencil to the iPad, starts charging immediately, and it pairs to the iPad immediately. So they're saying that this docking mechanism is very, very secure. It's hard for the Apple Pencil to be knocked off. And I think we can all agree a much better pairing and charging method than we had before. There's no buttons on it. There's no pairing process. There's no caps to be lost. This is ultimately a much better Apple Pencil that if you want, you can add a free engraving so you can get your own inscription on there if you'd like. It just may affect the delivery dates. The new iPad Pros also ship with a new A12X Bionix chip. So yeah, if you thought that the A12 chip in the iPhone XS and XS Max weren't fast enough, the iPad makes it even faster with eight GPU cores and seven CPU cores. This thing is supposed to be an even bigger powerhouse. I can't wait to see how the iPad Pro does in Geekbench. And you're gonna need all of that power to process so much content on such a high resolution display, nearly four million pixels running at 120 hertz. That takes a lot of power and luckily the A12X chip should allow it. Some minor things I noticed is that the iPad Pro only comes in space gray and silver. There's no gold color anymore. They still sell the last 10 and a half inch iPad for the same price. You cannot get the 2017 12.9 inch iPad Pro anymore, but that's okay because I thought the design looked pretty dated anyway. But yeah, still $650 for that 10 and a half inch iPad, which I still think is a great deal given you're getting a ProMotion display, plenty of processing power. And if you decide to go with that older 2017 10 and a half inch iPad, you can get it in gold and rose gold still. The new iPad Pros also can be configured from 64 gigs all the way up to a terabyte. Yes, it's finally happened. You can get a terabyte on an iOS device, which is way too much. I had no idea how people were ever gonna fill 512 gigs, but Apple went ahead and doubled it again. So the starting price, I was right on the money with my assumption. The 11 inch iPad Pro starts at $800, which definitely is a price increase, but you are getting a lot more out of it. And then the 12.9 inch new iPad Pro starts at $1,000. So yes, these are some of the most expensive iPads Apple has ever released, configurable basically to $2,000 if you wanna get a one terabyte option with cellular with a 12.9 inch display. Yes, you can easily push this thing over two grand. And because the smart connector has been relocated to the back, they had to design folio cases and covers differently. So now there's no more smart cover, obviously, because you can't just cover the glass. Now they have the folio cases, which cover the back and the front, which does fix the problem of the camera bump if that was annoying you. But I do agree that it's a little steep for the accessories to start at $80 for 
for the 11 inch iPad Pro smart cover than $100 for the 12.9 inch iPad Pro smart cover. Although they don't call them smart covers anymore, they call them folios. And then the keyboard cases are starting at $200. And to me, that is just insane. I thought the last iPad Pro smart keyboard was too much, but now these new keyboard cases have actual different docking mechanisms. So you can use it at different orientations, obviously support face ID, and there's no biometric better on a tablet. So yes, while I think the running theme with today's event was everything was more expensive than we thought it would be, like I was expecting the iPad Pros to start at 800, but I was not expecting that the larger size would be an extra $200 and that they start at 64 gigs. I just ordered the 64 gig model because I have two terabytes of iCloud storage and I rarely fill anything locally. So I'm okay with getting the lower end storage options, but man, everything is so expensive, but it is the best in the class. You're not gonna be able to find another tablet with a CPU this powerful, with a display this good, with biometrics that are probably this reliable. You know, like the Tab S4 has a Snapdragon 835, not even an 845. Iris scanning does not work in any orientation and there's no fingerprint reader on the Tab S4 either. The Pixel Slate is running toy CPUs. They're not anything to take seriously. And the display is just high resolution. It's not even a ProMotion display, which I think is more noticeable to people than just having more pixels on the screen. So you can also record 4K at 60 now on the new iPad Pros, which we couldn't do before. Now we can. I'm sure a lot of people might be bummed about the headphone jack being gone, but I think Apple's definitely moving in this regard and saying that this is the future. We want people to get more and more used to wireless. We want to perfect wireless so that it can be even better. And I'm very happy that they went forward with USB-C on the new iPads because I think it was time. Like they have done it on the iPhones yet because they're so close to just removing it altogether and going completely portless. With the iPads though, there's going to be a few more years of using ports and cables for external accessories and stuff. And Apple probably doesn't see the iPad Pros as about to remove the final port and go all inductive because they still have metal backs, they still have huge batteries, probably not ready yet for inductive charging. Overall though, I'm very happy with all the stuff they announced. I think it's really cool that they finally addressed the MacBook Air, they finally addressed the Mac Mini, and we finally got that iPad Pro refresh that we were all hoping for and all of these updates are pretty cool just probably a hundred to two hundred dollars more than we all wanted them to be but this is apple this is not news that apple products are expensive i know it's crazy also bugs me that the apple pencil is 130 dollars now instead of a hundred that's man a stylus for 130 dollars it's not even included that is quite a commitment but you are going to get a pretty great experience with these tablets so in my opinion no surprise as the apple sheep i think you are getting what you pay for you can find cheap cheaper tablets or cheaper drawing utensils out there, but they're not going to be quite as great as this experience is. So that's basically all the news. What are you guys most excited for? What are you pre-ordering or I guess ordering because you can buy all this stuff right now and it will be here in eight days on November 7th. To those curious, there were no updates to the 10R cases. There are still no Apple made cases for the 10R. Definitely no new AirPods, no new AirPower. That's not what this keynote was about. How many times do I have to tell you AirPower is dead? Get over it. This was definitely just about the pro market. So all that good stuff, let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. This is your Apple Sheep here. I'll see you in the next one.